These are the essentials. You need a wide lens. By wide, I mean like a wide, a short focal length, like say 24 mil, 28 mil, um, 18 mil, maybe even 12 mil or an 8 mil fisheye. Once you get into 30 yard or 40 yard, it's getting a bit long because the wider the lens and the wider the field of view it's capturing, the longer it takes the stars to travel across it when the Earth's moving. So you are going to get trails much more quickly with a long lens. Very often I get uh, people who are new to workshops emailing beforehand saying, I've got a 600 millimeter lens, shall I bring that? Not really, because uh, you've got a fraction of a second without a tracker before you get star trails. Whereas if you use, like I use a 24 millimeter lens on a full frame camera, you've got a good 13 seconds, uh, 10 seconds, if you want to be absolutely sure. It all depends on the lens and the camera body though. So the wider the lens, the longer it takes stars to travel past it. Therefore, the longer you get before they start to streak. And they will streak because it's all moving. Well, actually, it's us that's moving. The wider the aperture, the better. So I would absolutely recommend f1.4 if you can get something affordable. So I used to use a, an L series f1.4 for my Canon uh, years ago. It was about a 1500 pound lens, but it was set up for automatic photography. There was stuff in that I didn't need. And actually, although it was good for landscapes at f1.4, the coma trails on the stars were horrendous. So I had to stop it back down to f2.8. If I ever forgot that, after doing the setup and the focus, the shots were ruined. So when I bought a Sony, uh, Sony A7, about two years ago, I got a Samyang manual lens. So Samyang are Korean, and they're pretty good lenses. And the, the earlier ones had no automatic focus in them, but it wasn't necessary. I didn't want automatic focus. I didn't want to pay for it. So for nearly 500 pounds, about a third the price, I got a lens that was just as good as the Canon. Actually, it was better because it could get shots without coma at around F2. So if you have a lens that you want to shoot stars with, search the name of the lens and coma table on Google, and you'll hopefully get a table that will show you at which point you have to stop the aperture down to to stop getting coma. The first time you do this, you'll know. Around the edges, following the curvature of the lens, you'll get massive whiskers on the stars. That F1.4 on that L series lens used to be awful. Uh, and there's nothing you can do in the edit. You could be on for hours trying to take them off and it still wouldn't look right. So the slower the shutter speed, the better, but watch out for trailing stars. There are rules for this. You've maybe heard of the rule of 500, the rule of 600, the rule of 400, forget them. Those rules are usually wrong more often than they're right. The best way to do it is just work it out for yourself. So put the lens on your camera, focus on the stars, tell your focus and technique in a sec, photograph some stars, and if it trails, slow shutter speed. If it doesn't trail, try and get a little bit longer with your shutter speed. The longer you can get, the better, because you're letting more light in. And use a high ISO unless your camera's ISO invariant. And if you don't know that, Google it as well. So with my Canon full frames, like the Mark, the 5D Mark II, the 5D Mark III, 5D Mark IV, I would regularly shoot at about 6,400 ISO sometimes 3,200, which would, it didn't matter what you did, there would be noise in the shot, so I use noise removal software. And if you're wondering about that, Topaz, Topaz Denoise is excellent, but there are several noise removal filters you can buy. So here it is, how to focus. If you have the kind of lens that's marked up for the focusing with meters and then an infinity point, Infinity very rarely means infinity. And this is one where if your kids or your grandkids are into a uh, toy story, you need infinity and beyond. That's what you're looking for. Uh, so infinity on a camera setting, it's not infinity. The reason for that is because of uh, thermal expansion and contraction of the lens. Different temperatures mean different things. So therefore you couldn't have something that meant, meant infinity and was infinity most of the time. Having said that, I've seen a couple of lenses. There was a Sigma lens, I think. 
Sigma is something like 35 millimeter lens, where most of those were, it was infinity and it was fairly reliable. And the Samyang 14 millimeter, the first version, um, infinity pretty much was infinity and you could trust it. But most of the time, forget it. Even on the ones where you can trust it, you're better off checking it because you don't want to get home with what you think are brilliant shots and then you zoom in a bit and they're all a little bit bloated. So here's what you need to do. This is really lenses where you've got f2.8 or wider. So f2.8, f1.8, f1.4. More than nine times out of 10, I would say something like 95 times out of 100, you can open the aperture wide, turn the ISO right up, make sure your display is bright. So Nikons especially have a brightness for the display. So you turn that up, switch it to manual focus, find a bright star, zoom in on live view and just focus with the focus ring until it's as small as possible. Once you've done that, you're good for the rest of the night. If you tape it off with some gaffer tape, you're good forever. But you may not want to leave tape residue or tape your lens off if you use it for other things. Some people will get a marker pen and will mark two lines so you can match them up. So it gives you like an infinity symbol approximately. Some people use a scriber. Uh, those people shouldn't be allowed cameras. I wouldn't scribe a lens, but it's a nice, easy way of doing it, I guess. And finally, if you don't want to put anything on your lens, get your phone out, take a photograph from just above it that'll show you where infinity is on your lens.